sorting out the sapphires from the gem mountain mine gravel was pretty fun and i got some decent sapphires in terms of color not a lot of big ones unfortunately these ones are pretty much a carrot max maybe slightly more this one has a little bit of faceting that i tried and it fell off the top so i'll have to restick that some of them have good color like this one's a pretty nice purple uh, there's some yellow this one has a little bit of an orangish spot in the middle there's a light blue one here that's kind of nice but there are a couple that don't necessarily have the best color or are probably too small to do anything with and one of the ways to improve sapphires is by heat treating them where in the industrial process if you return these say to gem mountain they will heat treat them for you it'll take a while but They'll typically run it through two different heat treatments, depending on the color of the first burn, they call them. And so they raise them up to, you know, 16 to 1800 degrees for a couple hours and then let them cool and see what the color change is. And then if the change isn't as prominent as they'd like, raise it up to temperature again, perhaps a little hotter, and also in reducing conditions, which enhances the blue coloration in a lot of the sapphires. So even a stone like this could turn blue. However, a lot of these places are pretty busy. And so that could take, you know, four, 12 weeks. I don't know what the current turnaround time is. It varies by season. Since the process is just raising it up to temperature, if you have a hot enough kiln or oven, not a home oven, but uh, as you saw in the ring casting video, our lapidary club has a high temperature oven that nominally could reach about 2000 degrees, although it's kind of old, so it might only be, you know, 16 to 1800. And I thought we would just run a little test with a couple of these and see what happens after a couple hours in the furnace, see if we get any color change see if any of them break because of inclusions. A lot of these look pretty clear. So let's bring these over and get started. Unfortunately, this experiment did not pan out. Either we didn't get a high enough temperature in the kiln or we just didn't have color changing sapphires on our hands. These are our three test subjects, and they look about the same as they did when we started. Wait, that's a rock fact. The change is slight, but now that I can see them side by side, it's a little more obvious that there is a bit of color change, and the products are a little more yellow than the original stones. The change isn't very pronounced, I think because we didn't get hot enough in the kiln. I thought that it would get up to 1800 degrees centigrade, but I think it only went up to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit which is, I don't know what that is, 980 degrees Celsius. So we're less than a thousand degrees, whereas in the industrial heat treating of sapphires, those are raised up to 1600, 1800, maybe slightly higher degrees centigrade. So we were halfway, maybe slightly more than halfway to that change. However, there was a slight yellowation of these stones, and so I think that was the start of probably oxidation of iron from 2 plus to 3 plus, which is one of the main causes of yellow in sapphire. The stones that we started with were fairly colorless to maybe slight, slightly yellow, so they probably had a bit of iron to start with, and then raising them up to high temperature in an oxygen-rich environment will oxidize that iron from 2 plus to 3 plus. And iron takes the place of aluminum because uh, sapphires are corundum, which is just Al2O3. So the aluminum is in a 3 plus valence state and iron 3 plus substitutes for aluminum easily. I don't know how long we would have to go to see a very significant color change, if we would even see it in this low temperature. The diffusion rate at 1000 degrees centigrade, I don't know what that speed is, but I don't imagine it's very fast. So it would take a long time for all of that to diffuse out and or oxidize fully and see a very significant color change. And I don't think we would see any improvement in clarity or the blueation of the sapphires. We wouldn't reach that high temperature blue burn that the industrial processes do. 
where in that blue burn, you don't have to get up to that melting point of rutile, which is 1830 degrees centigrade or so. You can do it probably at around 1600 degrees centigrade. And that's because it can go into solid solution, which kind of means that it diffuses slowly or out and goes into the crystal structure rather than as these little rutile needles that are what cause the haziness of a lot of the sapphires. But because we are so far away from that melting point of rutile, slightly more than halfway, I don't think it would be a very fast process if it would get there at all. And in addition, I think those conditions tend to be more reducing than we would have in our furnace here where we just had atmosphere oxygen levels of about 20% oxygen, and so the partial pressure is kind of low. I think they do a variation of highly oxidizing and highly reducing, depending on what they want the color to be. If you're interested in learning more about the heat treating of sapphires, there's a pretty good GIA uh, article called The Heat Treating the Sapphires of Rock Creek, Montana. It's free to read online, and I'll link it down in the description below where they went through and did a bunch of tests on Rock Creek, Montana sapphires, which have a lot of iron actually, and different colors produce different colors after heat treating to various degrees and to at various oxygen and reducing conditions. If any of you in the comments have a kiln that could reach you know, 1600 degrees centigrade or maybe a little higher and have done this kind of test, let me know in the comments below how your tests went. I was kind of curious just how sapphires would react, you know, in a home, you know, not doing anything special to the atmosphere, just heating them up, seeing how they react to high temperatures just by themselves. We got part of the way there. It'd be interesting to see if we went, you know, double that temperature, what that result would be. But in the meantime, I guess we'll just have to take the slightly yellow color and I'll have to mark those as heat treated if I end up cutting them.